How many people can say they built a fortress on top of a volcano? Well, Scots can. Edinburgh is traditionally said to have been built on seven hills, and the main peak being Arthur's Hill, which is an ancient volcano that rises above the city of 250 meters. Made it to the top of oh, another mountain. Seriously guys, it's free, it's a volcano, definitely put this on your bucket list and we're gonna go and explore the city next. One of the best ways to explore Edinburgh is by walking the Royal Mile. It is full of a bunch of entertainment and people going crazy. I can't believe he's the Royal Mile heaves with street performers and buskers, not to mention the crowds that gather on the streets to watch. And here we witness the biggest amount of locals wearing kilts, the traditional knee-length, skirt-like garments that are worn by men. As you walk down the Royal Mile, you might notice a heart, and you'll be like, oh my god, it's so cute, take a look at it. And then, all of a sudden, somebody will just spit on it. The spinning tradition began in 1736 when they ordered the killing of six riders. Since then, the locals have spat in disgust at the entrance of the Talbot prison whenever they passed it. Now it has become a local custom to spit on the heart for good luck. The other thing Edinburgh is known for is Harry Potter tourism. Yes, although the book is written about England, most of it is inspired here by the capital of Scotland. Victoria Street is rumored to have been the inspiration of Diagon Alley, and on this street, Harry Potter fans like to visit the Museum of Context. This quirky shop spreads over the stone vault and replicates the authenticity of Ollivander's wand shop. It all started here at the birthplace of Harry Potter, The Elephant House, where J.K. Rowling spent months and months writing her first two novels of Harry Potter. Unfortunately, burned down in August due to all the magic they've been practicing. But despite that, there's still so many hidden gems Harry Potter fans can discover here, like taking pictures with owls, placing your hands on top of J.K. Rowling's, or finding the Lewis chess pieces that inspired the author to create the magical game of Wizard's Chess. If you call yourself a Harry Potter fan, you have to come to this place, the graveyard. It might sound weird, but J.K. Rowling was inspired here to create so many of her characters. Perhaps one of the most famous graves of all is from one of the most powerful wizards, the scariest wizards, the name they were going to say. And while you're already here at the Greyfair's graveyard, there's another story I want to share with you. You might all know Hachiko, the Akita that waited for his owner over and over again through the years. But here in Scotland, there's another story that dates 50 years before that about a good boy, Bobby. Bobby was the dog of a night watch of Edinburgh City Police. And after his owner has passed away, Bobby refused to leave his grave for 14 long years. And while good boy Bobby waited here for his master, the story almost turned more tragic when Scotland passed a new rule that forbid stray dogs. But they couldn't put good boy Bobby down, so they decided to elect him and make him an honorary citizen of Scotland, and allowing him to vote 100 years before womanhood. When good boy Bobby passed away, after 14 years of loyal service, there's a bar that was named in his honor. And our next stop is the Edinburgh Castle, which is located on the volcano and is one of the most recognizable landmarks of Scotland. And very important is to get here before 1 p.m. because since 1861, almost every day, they shoot the cannon here. They said there's no more tickets. They said 2.30 is the next one, so I don't know what we're going to do. So we'll miss it? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. But I they... want to see the gun! <laughs> I know, but you saw them already in Malta. <laughs> and Nice. <laughs> and Nice, yeah. Wait, wait, look, look. I stole the tickets it? from old people. <laughs> Just kidding, we got it. Let's go. So we're a little bit in a rush. It's 12.57. We didn't know you're supposed to get tickets online. And when we came here, it was all booked out till somebody canceled last minute. We got those tickets. We have two minutes to get to the firing of the gun. Come on. Left or right, left or right, left or right. I see you. We still got 30 seconds. Come on.
dating back to the 12th century, this castle has played actually a key role in Scotland's political history and it has actually been under siege more times than any other castle in Europe. Some people might not notice, but there is unicorns on the coat of arm and they're often in chains and that would just represent that the kings of Scotland were powerful enough to tame these mythical beasts. You see how the prisoners live here. One interesting fact about Edinburgh is it used to be called the Smoky City in the 1800s. But just look at it now, what a transformation. It's one of the greenest places in all of the United Kingdom with over 130 different parks. The other thing that I want to say is a little bit off topic, but I'm just really impressed by the support Scottish people showed to Ukraine. When we were coming here, there were so many Ukrainian flags among the highway. And now there are so many Ukrainian flags displayed from the windows, there are Ukrainian flags on their uh, government buildings. And I just want to say to all Scottish people, thank you. And your support means really a lot to us. Slava Ukraine. Another thing that we definitely recommend to do when you're in Edinburgh is to visit the National Museum of Scotland. First of all, the whole museum is absolutely incredible. It's huge and there are so many different exhibitions, so prepare to spend hours and hours there. But the chair on the top is this incredible rooftop with 360 view of this incredible city. And the most important, it's absolutely for free. So, must have when you're in Edinburgh. But to capture the best vantage point of the entire city, you gotta head to Culton Hill, which is right in the center of town and is one of the seven hills we mentioned. just saw how amazing Edinburgh is during the day. Let's go see if it's just as crazy at night. So we just passed the church pub and here is the library bar. Seems like you can find any kind of bar you desire. But the one that we chose and was highly recommended to us is Paradise Palms. It's supposed to have one of the, some of the best cocktails in town. After having so much fun last night, we felt a little bit guilty that we couldn't take Cosmo with us. So today we decided to take it to his favorite place, the beach, and we chose Portobello Beach, which is located just 15 minutes away from downtown. And take a look at this place. It is so charming and with an incredible amount of dogs. Cosmo. I've never seen anything quite like that. Have you covered? How are they swimming? I am freezing here. It's at least minus to me, and the wind is so cold, but they're brave to swim. Cosmo, go swim too. I don't even want to touch this water, baby. It's so cold.
absolutely in love with Edinburgh because, I don't know, architecture, landscapes and the most important people. I feel like every 15 minutes someone stopped and talked to us and we were so, so, so lucky with the weather there. Yeah, so we hope that the weather stays the same because we're looking to go up to the northern part of Scotland, to the Highlands and to shoot a video there. So we hope you stay tuned and subscribe to our channel. And we hope you will add Edinburgh to your bucket list after this video because it's such a unique place of this incredible world. Yeah, thanks for watching.